Hello students, this is a brief probability review. I would like you to watch this video before you get back from the uh, winter break. I'm going to go through the packet that I gave out in class. I'm going to give you some definitions and then we're going to do a couple of the exercises. Uh, here are the vocabulary words that I need you to know. Uh, you can pause the video now and write them down if you haven't done so already and then we will move on. I want to highlight a couple of these definitions. Tree diagram says a diagram showing all possible outcomes of multiple events. This is an example of a tree diagram. This is tossing three fair coins. This first toss represents heads and tails. The second toss represents head and tails if you got heads on the first toss or heads and tails if you got tails on the first toss. So it really represents all the different possible outcomes. You could have gotten heads on the first flip, heads on the second flip, and heads on the third flip, or you could have gotten uh, tails on the first, tails on the second, tails on the third, and there's all sorts of possibilities in between. This is useful because when you're writing out all the different possible outcomes, you can determine the probability a little bit easier. Let's take a look at one more, or two more definitions, I should say, independent events versus dependent events. I made a slide to describe them. Independent events are events whose outcomes do not affect other outcomes, and dependent events are events whose outcomes do have an effect on other outcomes. So, for example, dependent events feature drawing a card from a deck, for example, causing the probability to change. If you were to draw this ace of clubs here, then you would no longer have that ace of clubs in the deck, and your probabilities would change. However, if you roll a die, one fair die, or two dice, as shown here, that does not cause the probability to change. So, if you roll a die and you get a six that does not change the probability of you getting a six next time so that's about it for the definitions let's move on to the next page the next page talks about different terms in probability i'm going to show you the correct answers for these now so some of these blanks are filled up for you here the first blank is probability this ratio is called a probability uh, to find the probability of an event we have to calculate the number of desired outcomes what we want to happen divide by the number of possible outcomes, what could happen. The probability of an event that's called impossible is zero because if it's impossible, the desired outcomes, the things that we want to happen, can't happen. There are no desired outcomes, so we call that zero. Similarly, the probability of an event that is certain to happen is one because the desired outcomes are every possible outcome if it's certain to happen. And hopefully, it'll become more clear as we do more exercises. Uh, in order to help us with figuring out probabilities for rolling a die. I have this picture here that shows us the different possible outcomes of rolling a die, and it asks for the probability of rolling a five. Well, we know that rolling a five, this is the only desired outcome we have. So there's one desired outcome, which is rolling a five, and there are six possible outcomes. So we're going to do one desired outcome divided by six possible outcomes. So that would be one divided by six. The probability of rolling a 5 or less, we still have this 5 as our, as one of our desired outcomes, but we also have this as a desired outcome because that's less than 5. This is also a desired outcome, this is also a desired outcome, this is also a desired outcome. So all of these outcomes are desired, 5 of them, and we're dividing by the number of possible outcomes, which is 6. So we have 5 out of 6 as our probability. The probability of rolling a 4, well, we no longer have this as a desired outcome, or this, or this, or this. So we can get rid of them. All we have is the probability of rolling a four. There's one desired outcome, so we can say that is one out of six. And the probability of rolling a three or a four, well, this is one of our desired outcomes, but now so is this. So we have two desired outcomes divided by six possible outcomes. So two divided by six. What you should know about probability is that it is always expressed in its simplest form. So 2 over 6 is a fraction that can be simplified. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 2, we get 1 divided by 3. Now that you have a little bit more information about determining probabilities, let's go to the next page. I'm going to do the first one with you, and then we will. Uh, I'll let you pause the video, and then I will show you the answers. It says a jar contains 19 black marbles, 22 pink marbles, 21 purple marbles, and 11 violet marbles. A marble is drawn at random. So we're trying to determine the probability of getting a black marble. We need to first determine the number of desired outcomes. I know that my desired outcomes, I want a black colored marble, so that's going to be 19. 
I'm going to divide that by the number of possible outcomes. So in order to do that, in order to figure out that, I need to take all the marbles and add them together because those are the possible outcomes for reaching into this jar and drawing out a marble. Now, I remember before I said that you need to express the fraction in its lowest or simplest terms. One quick way that I can show you how to figure out whether it's in the simplest terms is by uh, putting it into the calculator. So 19 divided by 73 is equal to 0.26, blah, 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 blah. It's a rational number. In order to determine whether that was already in simplest form, I'm going to tell the calculator, well, give it to me as a fraction. So I went to the math menu and I went to fraction. I'm going to press enter. 19 over 73 is its simplest form. The calculator will automatically put it in its simplest form from decimal form. So if you type in the fraction into the calculator, press enter, and then go into math frac, it'll give you the simplest form. All right. Uh, what I want you guys to do is take a look at the other exercises and I will show you the answers in a moment. All right, as you can see here are the correct answers. Um, I am not asking you to write them as a decimal or a percentage. I'm just asking you to write them as a fraction. If you take a look, there are a couple of strategies that I've listed here. One of the most basic strategies and one of the most helpful is to write out all of the possible outcomes. That's what I've done here for number four, a number from 10 to 17. I just wrote out all the numbers from 10 to 17 and then circled the numbers that were desirable. For example, 12 and 15 are both divisible by three. So I circled them both. There are two possible outcomes that are desirable. There are eight possible outcomes in total. So I simplified that fraction. One of the most common student misconceptions is in one of the questions that's at the very end. And that question is number 14. It says a number from 20 to 30 is drawn at random. So students will think, oh, from 20 to 30, there's 10 numbers there. Uh, however, there are actually 11. If you listed out the numbers, like I did here, if you list out the possible outcomes, you'll see that there are actually 11. Starting from 20 and going all the way up to 30, there are 11 numbers. So I circled the ones that were even, and I observed that there were six of them, and I divided by 11. So I'll scroll back up to make sure that you guys see all of the answers. And then in a few moments, we'll move on. One of the other misconceptions, probability of not navy. In this case, that was question number three. Not navy, in other words, means green. All right, let's move on to the next page here. For the first question, it says you roll a, a die number from one to six. We're looking for the probability of an even number. Without writing out the sample space, without writing out all the outcomes, I can say that the probability of an even number is going to be three out of six, which is equal to one half. It's very similar to the questions on the other side. Pause the video now, try these numbers, or try these exercises, and I will give you the answers in a moment. All right, you should be able to see some of the answers here. Um, there are a couple that I want to specifically look at. These ones were fairly straightforward. If you go to number 23, it talks about so-called composite numbers. Composite numbers are opposites of prime. So for example, two is a prime number, three is a prime number, five is a prime number, but one, four, and six are not. Uh, next, I'd like to take a look at this question, number 25. It talks about a number greater than 19. Well, in this case, here are all the numbers. There are no numbers that are greater than 19. So I would call that probability zero out of seven. Another appropriate way to talk about that is saying zero. The probability there is zero. We can take a look at the rest of the exercises here, see if they make sense. Um, let me show the entire paper here. All right, hopefully these make sense. Let's move on to the next page. The next page is similar problems, but it introduces what's called a spinner. This spinner is another way of generating probability, um, and there are eight different outcomes. I'm going to let you take a look at this page and try it out, and then I will show you the answer. So pause the video now. All right, take a look at the answers for examples number 31 through 34. They are very similar to the previous ones. I wanted to show you again this trick with the fractions. I see 20 divided by 48, so I'm going to put that into my calculator. Uh, 20 divided by 48 is 0.416 repeating. And then when I turn into a fraction, it becomes 5 over 12. That's the method that I use in order to simplify this fraction. All right, 
If you look at example or exercise number 35, you can see it's a spinner. The spinner doesn't require you to write out a sample space. It just requires you to take a look at the sample space for the, the list of possible outcomes. Also, questions 36, 37, 38, and 39 deal with decks of cards. So I'm going to put up a picture of a deck of cards, and then we can uh, uh, take it from there. So pause the video now, try example number 35, and I will give you the answers in a moment. All right, here are your answers for the spinner problems. The probability of an odd number, we looked at 1, 3, 5, and 7. For the odds, we got 1 out of 2. Black sectors, there were 4 black sectors out of 8 possible, so that's 1 out of 2 again. An even-numbered black sector, it looks like all the black sectors have odd numbers, so the probability is 0 out of 8, or 0. And for prime numbers, we identified 2, 3, 5, and 7 as prime numbers. Uh, if you're curious as to why 1 is not a prime number, maybe you uh, should go ahead and Google that. Uh, for number 36, 37, 38, and 39, I would like you to refer to the picture of the cards, uh, which I'll show in a moment. All right, here it is. It has all 52 cards in the deck, from ace to king, four different suits. These are clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. The hearts and diamonds are referred to as red cards, whereas the clubs and spades are referred to as black cards. Take a look at these questions and try to determine the answers, and I will show you the answers in a moment. All right, you can take a look at the answers here. We determined that there were 26 cards that are red, both hearts and diamonds. That's 26 in total. The total number of cards is 52, so that's equal to 1 half. There are four jacks in the deck. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Divided by 52, that's 1 over 13. The probability of pulling a red 9, well, there are two red 9s, and I'm highlighting them now. That's the hearts and diamonds 9s. That's 1 out of 26. And 7 of diamonds, well, there's only one of those. That's here divided by 52, that probability is simply 1 over 52. And yes, you will be required to memorize the number of cards in a deck and the types, suits, and colors of those cards. I will be quizzing you when you come back from your break on those cards. All right, next page here. We'll take a look at experimental and theoretical probability. I'm going to write out a couple of the notes for you here. And the notes that I wrote out for you are reminding you about theoretical and experimental. Theoretical means probability that should happen versus experimental, which is probability that did happen. So take a look at these 20 flips and calculate those four probabilities. Pause the video now. All right, check your answers here. Theoretical probability never changes. Uh, flipping a heads on a fair coin should always be one out of two because there's one heads on the coin and two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Same thing with flipping a tails. Experimental probability, however, requires us to look back at what did happen. So here were our different outcomes, and I circled 8 times that it blended on heads. So 8 out of 20 is equal to 2 over 5. Same thing with flipping tails. Uh, there were 12 tails, so 12 over 20 is equal to 3 over 5. Take a look at the practice here. It tells us which event is more likely or which probabilities are the same. In order to do this, we have to determine how to compare these two. I'm going to show you how to do that now. The easiest way to compare probabilities is by converting everything into decimals. So for example, 4 over 5 as a probability is equal to the decimal 0 0.8. 4 over 5 is 0 0.8. A probability of 80%, well 80% we know is 80 divided by 100. That's what percent means. And that's also 0 0.8. These two probabilities then are equal. Pause the video now and try to answer questions 1 through 4. All right, you can see that the probabilities are calculated here on the left, and I showed that for question number one, they're equal because the probabilities are the same. For question two and three, there's one of them that is more likely because the decimal is a higher value. And for question number four, 100% is 100 divided by 100. That should be the same as one. For the last exercises that I'm going to review in this video, you're supposed to circle all probabilities that are the same as 50%, 100%, etc. Uh, convert these into decimals, and then figure out which ones of these are the same decimals. Pause the video now, and I will give you the answers in a moment. All right, you can see the answers here. I've converted each of these probabilities to decimals, and I've converted all the other probabilities to decimals as well. Once you do that, you can see which ones that are the same you can see that every one of these are the same because they all give you 0 0.75. For example, you can see that most of these are not the same, 0 
and 0 0.005, for example. Hopefully this was helpful. Stay tuned for part two of the probability review. Have a great break.